Good morning and happy Father's Day to you. It is always such a treat to have the Dad's Choir with us, so thank you so much for starting out our worship this morning. Please join me now in reading together the call to worship, which you'll find printed in your bulletin. We did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. We are Come, let us worship God. Please be seated for the prayers for forgiveness. Let us read together. Holy God, we confess that we are not always the people that you know we have it in us to be. Fear squeezes out the courage, the faith, the love that you have put into us. Have mercy on us. Help us to know the Spirit, making all things new, even us. And it is in the newness of faith that we can face our fears, that we can embark on the path that God has chosen us to take, and that with God, we can be full of courage and strength. God loves you and prays for you and even now forgives you. Alleluia. Amen. be seated. 
It is a great joy that this morning we are commissioning our senior high mission trip. We will be headed this year to a little town called Painted Post, New York. That's near Corning, if you know the area. It's a place that used to be thriving with small farms and canneries and businesses that have long left the area. And people are struggling to make sense of what it means to start anew and afresh and to build an economy where there is nothing. And so we're headed there for a week to join with Chatham United Methodist Church, who will be in the region um, all summer long. If you know the RISE program, Risingville, oh gosh, I should know what that stands for, but I forgot. But anyway, the RISE program, um, it's been going on for 30 years that Chatham UMC and many of our local partners have had a continuous ministry in Steuben County and the southern tier of New York State. It is a huge pleasure to be able to go there. It's actually close to where I grew up. And to bring these beautiful young people to saw with power tools, to drill, to hammer, and to build wheelchair ramps and porches and roofs, and to bring some hope and lots of care with us. And so I would like to ask all of this year's mission trip um, participants who are here this morning to come on up for our commissioning. Wonderful. I, I know Deborah was explaining beforehand that a commissioning uh, means that uh, we as an entire congregation are uh, pri privileged to uh, have you go on our behalf and to represent us uh, through the coming week. And we are going to have a prayer with you all uh, as we send you. Please know that our prayers are with you throughout the whole of next week, and we'll be looking forward to uh, seeing you when you get back. Invite us, let us pray. Holy God, we are grateful for all who are traveling to Painted Post, leaving the comforts of home behind to serve you. As they travel, we pray that you would go before them to prepare the way for them. We pray that you would go with them, keeping them safe. As they work, we pray that they would be open to encountering you among those they meet. And when they return, help us to join with them in celebrating your goodness through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for doing this. We are going to hope that uh, during our Take 10, you'll have an opportunity to, to uh, say hello to these uh, senior highs and uh, wish them well and uh, tell them that they'll be in your prayers as well. We're going to take a minute to thank them on your behalf. And the peace of Christ be with you, and we invite you to share that with each other. Peace. Hey there. Hey, how are you? Hey there.
feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid and I think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Please be seated. It's a wonderful and busy Sunday here at Central Church as we uh, stand on the verge of uh, summer season and school breaks and all that good stuff. Uh, And one of the things that we want to do before we head out is that we'd like to take a moment to uh, recognize the accomplishment of our graduates. And at this time, I'm going to invite uh, anybody who has graduated in the last year from any uh, educational programming. If you would come forward and stand here, we'd like to have a prayer with you. Uh, We invite you to please come forward. All of our graduates, please come forward. Let's uh, congratulate our graduates uh, as a whole. And let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for these folks who stand before us. We thank you for their accomplishments, and we know that their accomplishments are thanks to the love and support of many folks around them, their families, their friends, their teachers. We ask that they would take what they have been given, that they would use it, that they would continue to grow, and we pray that you would use them, for they have received much. And in your sight, they have much that they can do. Help them to find their way into paths of service, where their own deepest need intersects with this world's greatest needs. And so may they find that place to which you call them, through Christ. Amen. Again, congratulations. We're going to ask those of you who are receiving uh, scholarship awards to stay up here. If you're not, you can return to your seat. And I'm going to call on Kevin Hill, who's going to lead us in our... um, Uh, gifting of uh, some of our scholarship awards here at Central. Good morning. Good morning morning and happy Father's Day. Glad to see all of you here with us today. Um, Of all the activities and missions and endeavors I get to participate in, This is always a special one because we get to acknowledge and celebrate the young men and women of this congregation and they are outstanding and I would stack them up against anybody, any place. So let's give them a round of applause again, please. I am here to describe the process and I'll be as expeditious as possible, but I'm always Uh, reminded of a comment by Don Steele when I first started to do this. And he goes, you know, Kevin, this is a day when we have many, many things going on. So I need you to be as quick as possible. And I thought about that, and he said, if you're not, you'll be making this presentation from another Presbyterian church. (laughs) 
And I really like it here, and I love all of you, so I really don't want to do that. So if you could work with me, I'd appreciate it. The process is a very simplistic one. We evaluate applications from graduating seniors regarding a variety of war awards and scholarships. And let me tell you unequivocally and without reservation, these scholarships, one is just as great as the next. These young men and women are accomplished academically, athletically, and from a community perspective, they're just absolutely terrific. And I get the opportunity to be part of a team that evaluates them and bestows these awards, and it's wonderful. And I want to thank my very dear friend, Lee Barnes, who assisted me and gave me input and feedback as we were able to develop um, the recipient schedule. So without any further ado, let's meet the recipient. The winner of the Laura C. Bender Central Presbyterian Award is Alexander Shannon. The next category is the Central Presbyterian Leadership Award where we have two recipients. The first is Brandon Besser. And our next recipient, is, this family is just very, very close to my heart. I just happen to love them very much. And um, it's always a pleasure to, to um, bestow an award upon anyone in their family. Bring up James Cho, please, for the Central Presbyterian. Winner of the Greer Scholarship Athlete Award goes to David Shaw. The Dorothy Tawney Christian Service Award goes to Tatiana Lewis. There's also a second recipient in this award, John Gerard, but I believe Mr. Gerard had a prior obligation, and so we will hold his check and extend our congratulations to him at another time. Um, the Jeanette Thatcher Christian Service Award goes to Emma Corrin. And finally, the Francis Brown BD Service Award goes to Tian Dijon. You have now met the recipients. I have two comments to make prior to the conclusion of this award ceremony. And the first is a reminder to them that you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. And my second comment is, I hope I speak for all of us here at Central Presbyterian. To the world, you may be one person, but to us, you are the world. May God bless you and thank you all very much. Wonderful. I, I do want to highlight, uh, I think uh, I'm right here, is this the, the Young Family last Sunday with us? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Chris, John, Karen, uh, Tian, Stefan, uh, our prayers go with you into a new chapter of life and hope it's uh, as good as I hope this one has been. Uh, we were going to miss you a great deal, but we wish you all the best. Absolutely. Um, we want to, I want to highlight to you, there's an insert in your bulletin which contain uh, names of, of those who so far have made a pledge to our capital campaign and our thanks to each and every one of you. 
Um, if you uh, still would like to be involved in making a pledge to the Capitol campaign, there are pledge forms at all the entrances to the sanctuary today. We invite you to take one and prayerfully consider how it is that you can help us to secure our facility uh, for the next 150 years of Christian service here in this place. Um, but our gratitude to all of those who've already made those pledges. We are very, very grateful for each and every one. A couple of prayer requests that I want to continue to highlight for you. We ask for your continued prayers to be with Bob Zanker. And we also ask for your continued prayers to be with Dorothy Berger and her son. Uh, Dorothy's out in Colorado with her son and uh, continues to uh, both uh, Bob and Dorothy's son continue to deal with uh, real serious health uh, conditions. So we ask for your ongoing prayers for both. You know, the Central Church has had a long history of involvement in mission, both locally and uh, around the world. And uh, one of those uh, people who represent that long-standing commitment here at Central is Nadia Ayub, who is a Presbyterian Church USA mission co-worker that Central has had a privilege of, of sponsoring in various uh, parts of her ministry in various places around the world. And Nadia is here with us this Sunday. We can't pass by the opportunity to give Nadia an opportunity to, to update us on, on her next chapter. So Nadia, I'm gonna invite you to come forward and, and tell us a bit about that. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I greet you. I don't have any paper to tell from, but I will take the chance to thank you so much for being my partner for many, many years, since 1997. I was in Kazakhstan and Tajikistan, and lastly, I was in Ukraine. I want to thank you so much for all your encouragement and prayer and support that helped me to be in all these places and see what God is doing in these countries. Last mission was in Ukraine and I worked with the Roma people who are used to be called gypsy and I served for seven years there and I thank God by the end of the time, I left there, or God, what God started, a mission center that includes preschool program and Bible clubs for boys and girls and service on Sunday for Roma people and Sunday school service and many other programs goes in, in between in the week. We started the preschool program with five children, and now we have 25 children. Maybe the number is not big for you, but for Roma people to give their children to be diligent in education, this is a big number, and this is a big success. Thank you so much for being part of that, and give me the chance to see what God will do with these Roma people. The Partner there in, in Ukraine is a Reformed Church in Carpathia. They invited us to come to help, and when the work is finished, we say goodbye. From the very first minute I start working there, I know I need to work with the local people, so when time comes to leave, the work is in their hand, and they can manage doing it. In November, I received a new call to go to Greece to work with the refugees, uh, especially the Syrian refugees. They needed interpreter and they needed somebody to work with the children. I heard a lot about this work there and how the evangelical church in Greece, in Katerini, they started this project to have permanent, kind of permanent 
places for these refugee people to stay in. They serve family with children uh, less than five years old. They serve mothers with children without a father. They serve people who have special need. And that's what I will be going to work and interpret between those refugees and official places and uh, immigration offices and doctors and lawyers. And I trust God and I trust his leading for you as you've been very encouraging all these past 20 years. I will trust that you will continue. And I thank you so much. And I thank God who said, Jesus said he is the light of the world, but he turned it to all of us. And he said, you are the light of the world. And I pray that his light will shine through you by the way of me in Greece among the refugees. Thank you so much. And I will be around in coffee time if you would like to come and we talk more about what is going. Thank you. God be with you. Finishing up today our look at the Ten Commandments, we actually have looked at all ten, and uh, we're now uh, looking at the few verses that follow uh, the ending of God's giving of the Ten Commandments. We're in Exodus chapter 20, I'm beginning to read it, the 18th verse, listen and hear God's word. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come only to test you and put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And I want you to let that last sentence stick in your brain for a moment. Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And I have to tell you, I find that to be a startling thing to read in the Bible. Because that's not where... I think God was, not in the thick darkness. Whether that thick darkness refers to a place of confusion or depression, fear or trouble, that's not the place where I expect to find God. Except perhaps as a source of light in the thick darkness. It would be fine if what the Bible said there was that God was there in that thick darkness to bring clarity where there was confusion, to bring courage where there was fear, to bring compassion where there was depression, to bring strength when there was, where, where there was trouble. But here in this passage in the Bible, just after giving the Ten Commandments, we have just this. Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And the Bible leaves God there a bit. In the thick darkness is a place to find God. So I have to tell you, the more I let that sink in, the better it seems to me. Because we all know times of thick darkness in our lives, don't we? There are times in life when we're really afraid. When we're confused and in doubt. When we're in trouble. When we're sad, even depressed, some of us. 
In the past couple of weeks, the news has been filled with stories about suicides. Of course, we were shocked by the news of two celebrities who took their lives, but this being Father's Day, the one story that I can't shake is the story of the immigrant father who took his life after the U.S. Border Police violently ripped his three-year-old son from his arms and took him away and threw the dad in some jail a long distance away. And I can't shake that one because I can't even imagine how I would react to such an outrage if I was in his shoes. It's outrageous. Can you imagine what you would do if somebody came and ripped your child, your grandchild, out of your arms and took them away from you? Of course, people always try to make sense of what drives a person to commit suicide. And while I'm no psychiatrist, from what I understand, sometimes people find themselves in such a dark place in their life that suicide seems to them to be the only way forward out of that darkness. And you know, I have to tell you, I find it comforting somehow to allow myself to imagine God being there with people in that thick darkness where it seems that they can find no light whatsoever, no hope anymore. So that even if they don't realize it, even in those most dreadful moments of their lives, those people are not alone. None of us are ever really alone, no matter what, no matter how outrageous the turn life takes, no matter how awful. Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was because that's where God was and that's where God is sometimes. In one of her early books, Anne Lamott described a very dark time in her own life. She had had an abortion and described spending day after day staying at home, getting drunk and high, until one night she began bleeding heavily. But she was so disgusted with herself that she couldn't bring herself to call anyone to help her. She thought she just deserved whatever was going to happen. Well, the bleeding eventually stopped, and Lamont wrote, I got in bed shaky and sad and too wild to have another drink or take a sleeping pill. I had a cigarette and turned off the light. After a while, as I lay there, I became aware of someone with me hunkered down in the corner in the dark. I just assumed it was my father whose presence I had felt over the years when I was frightened and alone. The feeling was so strong that I actually turned on the light for a moment to make sure that no one was there. Of course, there wasn't. But after a while in the dark again, I knew beyond any doubt that it was Jesus. I felt him as surely as I feel my dog lying nearby as I write this. And that thought kind of horrified her because, as Lamott put it, she was not a Christian and did not want to be a Christian. I would rather die, Lamott remembers thinking to herself that night. And yet, as she put it, regardless, I felt Jesus sitting there on his haunches in the dark, in the corner of my sleeping loft, watching me with patience and with love. And I squinched my eyes shut, but that didn't help because that's not what I was seeing him with. 
Indeed, we might say that it's impossible to see much of anything with our eyes when we find ourselves in places of thick darkness. But that's where we sometimes find ourselves. And that's where God was. You know, it's Father's Day, and it's appropriate on this day to celebrate family. Although, as I wrote in my blog on our website, you know, Father's Day has this checkered kind of commercial history in the United States. It's the way merchandisers decided they could sell extra ties in June. But it's a good day to celebrate family. And on such a day as this, a part of me wishes that I could give you some sort of light message about the value of family and the value of fathers and the father figures in our lives. I really wish with a part of me that the Bible would allow me to go there, but it didn't. Instead, the Bible reminds me to tell you that life isn't easy, no matter how hard we try to do the right thing. Life is dark sometimes. But when we find ourselves confused and frightened and in trouble, when we find ourselves depressed in a place where the darkness is thick and total and complete, I hope I hope that you might remember a bright, sunny Father's Day when you were in church and when you heard that God is there with you in that thick darkness. And even though you can't see God with your eyes, make no mistake, God is there with you, watching over you with patience and with love, with you whenever you find yourself in the thick darkness where God was, where God is. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, for those who might be here who find themselves in times of thick darkness in their lives, for those with whom we have contact who might find themselves in times of thick darkness in their lives, we pray that you would be near, that you would bring a sense of your nearness, that you would reach even those eyes cannot see, and that you would reach with patience and with love, so that anyone who finds themselves in such a situation would know that they are not alone. Unless we think this is simply a matter of our praying, we look at our own hands and our own feet and know that you have put us here on this earth to do something, to be with those who are going through valleys of deep and dark shadows, to walk alongside, to be a voice for the voiceless, and to insist that we are to follow your way, your way of respect. to follow your way, your way of devotion to you. Holy God, hear us, we pray, as we pray these things in Jesus' name, as together we are bold to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Friends in Christ, all that we are and all that we have is a gift from God. Let us return our hearts to God and return with our gifts of gratitude for all of that grace. Amen.
Loving God, full of thanksgiving, we come to you as your children, no longer afraid in the dark, but knowing that even in the deepest, darkest night, that you are with us. Loving God, full of this abiding love, we ask that you use these gifts and our whole selves, that we might share with the world that even in the darkest night, that you are there, full of love and grace. Alleluia. Amen.
brothers and sisters, this service of worship has ended and we go from this place to serve God in all that we say, in all that we do, in all who we are. None of us knows what we will face this week. For some, there will be great joy and triumph, and for others, there will be sadness and defeat. But whatever it is that we face this week, we do not face it alone. But we face it all in the strength and the power of the Almighty God, who is always near. And now, may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would overflow with hope. God bless you.